Forget everything you thought you knew, the Earth, the universe, the cosmos, the very chair you're sitting in, the very buttock you are sitting upon. They're all an illusion. That's the latest news from a team of theoretical physicists in Japan who've used a complex series of numbers and equations to conclude that the entire universe may just be one giant hologram. This may not be quite as crazy as it sounds. Tim, this is a story essentially about string theory, right? You're our, our token physicist. Remind us what string theory means and what this story does. So string theory is, once again, the theory that um, everything in the universe is made of tiny vibrating strings, um, and the way they vibrate determines what kind of particle they are and what kind of force they carry throughout the universe. Um, so this is a theory that's based on this universe. Um, it's sort of a universe in a box or in a ball. It's a universe that's contained within a space, and on that space there's a boundary, um, sort of the way that you have a a tennis ball or something, or, or a basketball, you've got the skin of the basketball and you've got the interior. So you've got a universe in the interior, and on the skin, there's something else going on. So the idea is that what's going on in the interior can be described entirely by what's going on on the outside skin. And it's, it's, it's like a hologram. Everything inside is determined by what's happening outside. So, so that's this latest theory, right? But the, I mean, string yeah. theory, which is which is arguably the prevailing sort of theory among physicists today, right? Is that all of all of matter is actually comprised of these tiny little vibrating strings, and that that energy and particles are all sort of just v tiny little microscopic vibrating strings that we haven't seen, but that we can, but whose existence we can postulate. Is that fair? That's that's the theory. I wouldn't I wouldn't exactly call it the prevailing theory. It's more of our our best working test of various kinds of quantum gravity right now. No one knows if it's true, really. Um, but it's a fun thing to play around with, and it's an immensely complicated theory that we haven't really worked out all the details of. So until we come up with a better theory, we use this one. And so far, <laughs> it, it gives us a lot of cool ideas, right? Like, this is the theory that all this holography stuff came out of. And now we're finding examples of this in all sorts of other theories as well. So even yeah. if string theory is wrong, it's useful. Jacqueline, I've spoken to Brian Green a bunch of times, who is one of the godfathers of string theory, uh, one of, well, one of the foremost uh, physicists on, on string theory. And every time he talks, he blows my mind and also confuses me a great deal. He's talking about parallel, you know, he's talking about all of these different realities, like alternate universes. And whenever I ask him, hang on, do the alternate universes, are they really, really physically real? Or are they just like things that we invent in order for equations to work? And he's like, no, they're really real. Like there's all there are alternate universes and we're all made up of vibrating strings. And then my head explodes. And now apparently Apparently the whole universe is a hologram. Help me out here. <laughs> yeah, no, it is pretty complicated and mind-blowing. But, um, you know, I was trying to think of the most simple way to put the holographic principle. And it is, I mean, it's difficult to do. And I think the holographic principle means different things to different people in physics. But on, you know, the most simple of terms, what this um, paper is kind of showing us is it's kind of the most clear evidence yet that, uh, what the holographic principle is, which is the idea that our three-dimensional reality is a project projection of information stored on a two-dimensional surface. So it's kind of like the conclusion that the information it takes to describe our three-dimensional reality, or like in the paper, a black hole or whatever, can be expressed in two dimensions. So I think that's the most simple way to put it. But it's, I mean, it's complicated, it's mind-blowing, but it is really interesting. James, do you get the sense that I, I sometimes wonder whether or not these kinds of explanations are impossible to wrap my head around because they're so fantastically true that a mere human like me can't understand them? Or then I sometimes wonder whether they've gone so far off the rails of any kind of logic that physicists are just dabbling in their own theses. Well, to, you know, like a wet scientist, a lab scientist, this makes not strings, but springs come out of your head. But it's... <laughs> You know, as Dean Radin has said, theoretical physics, it's a really, it's a great playground. I th and I think Tim mentioned this. All that matters is the elegance of the mathematics. And, you know, all these people are basically Pythagorean idealists at heart. And as long as you don't have any restriction on the number of dimensions you use, you can create any universe you want. It's great fun, but for an experimentalist, it's just great fun. Right. <laughs>